Hello and welcome back to this Python tutorial series on creating a cursor descent parser for a calculator. And in today's video, we're going to be uh, finalizing the extendability of our calculator. So one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you guys a short example. So we create a, a new parser. We add a variable x, which is has a value of three, and then we make our tokens from the expression x to the second power plus five. So then what we're going to do is we're going to simply parse this these tokens and return the, uh, the calculation. We're going to do that three times. Actually, let's do it once first. So here we have it. 3 raised to the second power is 9. 9 plus 5 is 14. Now, what would happen if we did this another time? It should get the same answer, right? But here we, we're getting a different answer. And if you have a handy calculator by your side, what it's actually doing is it's taking 14, raising that to the second power, and adding 5. And if we were to do this again, it would take 19,000, raise that to the second power, and then add 5. As we see here, we're getting an overflow. Our result is too large. And so what is actually happening behind the scenes? What is causing this to happen? If we go back to our parser, uh, we can see here that we're passing in from our original file here, we're passing in the tokens to our parser. And so we're passing these, uh, these values by reference in Python. So if we were to go to operand 3, what it looks like to be on line 128, we're storing the value in the right dot value where the right is a token. And that token is actually a part of the original token. So after this calculation, we are actually adjusting the tokens themselves by replacing these values with their calculations. And if we were to debug this real quick, I can show you exactly what I mean. So here we have our debugger. We have our tokens. So let's say x raised to the second power right here, plus 5. So we have x raised to the second plus 5. After this iteration, now it's 3 raised to the ninth power plus 14. And so what it's doing here is it's replacing these values. So every time we call one of these functions and we're saying write out value is equal to this calculation, we're assigning the reference value instead of just the local value. So what we need to do is we need to adjust this. That way we return uh, new tokens instead of adjusting the original ones. So what I'm going to do here is every time we assign or return a current token, I'm going to make a new one instead. So I'm going to begin at the final function. So here we have uh, our token and we're creating a new one excuse me instead of creating a new one we're just assigning that value back into some other token and then we're just returning it so what we want to do here is we're going to say new token is equal to a token whose token value is num and whose value is this and then we simply just want to return new token And then let's go down here to factor. And so as we can see here, we're taking the negative of this value. So what we want to do is make a new token and then take the negative of the original value. And so I'm going to do that right here. We're going to say new token is equal to token of token value num and simply this value. And we're just going to return new token. So the last thing we need to do is do the do the same procedure for the operands. So instead of saying write dot value is equal to this, we're going to make a brand new token. Of value num. And simply copy, paste. 
copy, paste, make this a negative, return, new token, and do the same procedure down here. For multiplication, and division. And for exponentiation. So there we have it. We've adjusted all of our tokens appropriately. So now if we were to actually go back to our calculator here, I can copy and paste this thing multiple times. We play it out, we get all the correct values. And so now this is going to be very vital in our upcoming tutorials because we're going to be recalling the same tokens, the same expression, except we're going to be able to change the variable. So if I was to, let's say, replace variable with 5 instead, we get 5 raised to the second power, which is 25, plus 5 is 30. So as we can see, this works. And like I said before, in a lot of the upcoming uh, videos, we're going to be replacing lots of variables except using the same equation. So we're going to be using the same tokens. So we want to make sure we uh, fix these errors now. So thank you for watching this tutorial series and hopefully you've learned a lot.